the embassy in Kabul sent a dissent cable in July directly to the secretary. On that same call with House lawmakers this afternoon, the secretary said that he received that cable and read it in mid-July. Why were there no preparations for a smoother transition? Um, I will, I will come to that uh, because I we do not uh, agree with that premise. But let let me start with just a, a broader word uh, about how we approach this generally. Um, we believe that um, constructive internal dissent is valuable. It is something we welcome. Uh, we believe it to be patriotic. Uh, we know it to be protected. Uh, and we have uh, full confidence that constructive internal dissent makes us more effective. Uh, and that's why the secretary uh, has pledged, and in fact does, uh, read every single communication that comes in through the dissent cable. Uh, not only does he read it, he uh, contributes and approves every single reply uh, that goes back. Um, more importantly, uh, and to be very clear about this, we are uh, determined to incorporate uh, the channel's constructive and thoughtful ideas into our policy planning, uh, into our contingency planning. Uh, that is always, 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 to your question, what we do. Um, we're also committed to the integrity of the channel. We want our employees to know that this channel is protected. This is a channel where they can express their candid, unvarnished thoughts and analysis to the highest levels of this department without fear of retribution, without fear of uh, reprisals. Uh, and that's precisely why we don't comment publicly on these messages, even when um, they may not be classified. Um, so that's the backdrop. When it comes to uh, the SIV processing when it comes to contingency planning. Let me make a couple points. Um, as you know, and we've had an opportunity to discuss this in this room and in other uh, venues in, in recent days. Uh, we have gone to extraordinary lengths to expand our capacity to process special immigrant visas over the course of this administration. Um, I mentioned this yesterday, but it's, it's relevant to this discussion. When we took office, not a single SIV interview had been conducted since March of 2020. Now, of course, this was due to the COVID protocols uh, that were uh, in place. Um, but within two weeks of this administration taking office, uh, those SIV interviews uh, had restarted. Um, as of earlier this month, we were processing more than 800 visas per week. That is an increase of more than eightfold. Uh, we were at about 100 visas per week uh, as earlier uh, this year. And that doesn't happen by accident. That was the result of steps that the department took, that President Biden took. President Biden issued an EO uh, that uh, ordered this department to take a holistic look uh, at this program and to streamline it, to make improvements, uh, which is precisely what we did. Uh, it is also a function of the support we have had from members of Congress, uh, because again, this is a 14-step program that is defined uh, in statute. And so we have to work in partnership uh, with Congress on this in terms of the programmatic um, details of it, but also uh, the budgetary uh, implications. Um, so by earlier this month, uh, we had been able to increase our processing uh, eightfold. And we did that uh, in spite of a COVID outbreak, uh, in spite of a program that was uh, in some state of disrepair when this administration came into office. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday, but there was actually uh, an inspector general uh, investigation into the SIB program mid last year. Uh, and it was a pretty blunt in its fi findings, chronic understaffing. Uh, a lack of a single coordinating uh, figure, um, an interagency dynamic that included not only the Department of State, Department of Homeland Security, uh, other departments and agencies um, that made the processing less than, less than streamlined. Uh, on top of all that, uh, the increased throughput in terms of visa processing. Uh, we, in mid last month, announced the launch of Operation Allies Refuge. And this was 
the effort uh, to bring, actually bring to this country SIV applicants um, who had completed uh, a certain stage of the security uh, vetting process. Uh, that effort is now uh, very much still underway, uh, although in a, in, a, in a different form. I say all that not to suggest that we have accomplished what we set out to do. Far from it. There is a lot of unfinished business here. And in fact, in many ways, uh, the most important elements of this project are ahead of us rather than behind us. Uh, because right now, uh, working together with the U.S. military, we're in the midst of uh, an airlift operation uh, that, at least to my mind, uh, is largely unprecedented. Um, and it is a reflection of the commitment we have to SIV applicants uh, that not only have we followed through on that commitment to grant them the visa, which is what the SIV program was envisioned to do, uh, but that we are in the midst of an ambitious operation to actually bring them to the United States. Uh, so to be clear, every time we get a constructive idea, uh, whether it is um, at the table in a policy meeting, whether it's from our counterparts at a different department or agency, or whether it's through uh, the dissent channel, we incorporate that uh, into our planning. Uh, by, um, uh, it is fair to say that uh, by Last month, of course, uh, there was uh, quite in-depth contingency planning. Contingency planning uh, was something that uh, we started uh, for Afghanistan early in this administration, knowing that we faced uh, a series uh, of uh, important dates with May 1, the decision that would come before that, and the retrograde operations that would come after that. Uh, so the contingency planning, the scenario planning, uh, was uh, already very much underway. Every single good and constructive idea uh, was fed into that. Uh, it made us better. It made us more efficient. Uh, and ultimately, uh, it has allowed us to serve uh, our Afghan partners uh, even more effectively.